guys and welcome to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. If you're new, my name is Ashley and today's video is all about tips for decluttering. I feel like I just got sucked into it lately and I was doing a ton of research. I've like decluttered my entire house. I'm itching to get out in my garage. So if you need like a garage or shed or anything like that, that's gonna be coming in the near future. I'm just waiting for it to like cool off because it is so hot here right now. But as soon as I can get out there, me and the camera and my husband are heading out there. Um, but I wanted to share some tips with you that I've learned over my process of decluttering, things that worked for me, things that stood out, because I feel like when you hear that one decluttering tip that like clicks in your head, then it just like sets the foundation and you can just get rid of everything that you're not using. So I hope you find this video helpful. If it does, definitely like it and share it with someone else that could use it as well. And if you're new here, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below. And now let's get into these decluttering tips. Decluttering tip number one is a question. And this is the most common question that I think we've heard. It's the most popular just because of like the KonMari method. And it's, does this item spark joy? For me, this is one that never worked for me. If it works for you, great. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and share it because it is such a well-known tip. But for me, like I don't love fashion, but I have to have clothes. And like, I don't love cooking, but I have to have pots and pans. So does it spark joy never really worked for me. But if you try that process, or if it does work for you, basically you pick up an item as you're going through it and you pick it up and you see if it sparks joy. So if you wanna try this, say you pull out all of your clothes, start with picking up something that you know you love, so you know the way it makes you feel, and then pick up something that you automatically know you don't wanna keep, you don't need it anymore, so you can kinda of figure out the difference of like, this did spark me joy, and this one didn't. So tip number two was a huge game changer for me. And I had heard it before. Once again, it's the KonMari method. And basically, first off, you should always be organizing it by category. So don't try to like declutter your clothes and your books and your kitchen stuff. Like choose one thing because it can be very overwhelming, especially if you haven't decluttered in a while. So say we're gonna start with clothes the whole point is to pull everything out. And I was guilty of just like swiping through my closet and pulling stuff out. I was even doing a good job, but when you actually pull everything out, like all your clothes, I'm talking clothes, socks, bras, underwear, pajamas, all of that, and put it on your bed or your sofa or your dining room table, you start to see how many things you actually have and what you're using, what you're not using. You're gonna find pieces that you love that you forgot about, and you're also gonna see stuff in there that you haven't worn for years and you don't need anymore. So this is really important to do. I recently did this with towels, and I'm gonna attach a photo for you. Finally, I was like, I'm gonna test this out. So I started to pull pull out all of our towels. Guys, I had like 36 towels in my house and we are a family of three. It is insane. I had towels here in our bathroom. Savannah had towels. I had extra towels for our guest. I had extra towels for our boys. I had towels to wash and dry our cars with. And that 36 didn't even include our beach towels outside. So once I saw the number and how many we had, I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm wasting so much storage space and I was able to declutter so many. So if you haven't tried pulling everything out, do it next time you declutter and it will make a huge difference. tip is to find motivation. So the best way for me to get motivated to declutter is to watch 
or listen to like podcasts or watch YouTube videos, even get inspired like on Pinterest or Instagram. But if you see somebody decluttering, you're gonna get the itch to ditch is what someone else called it. I thought that was a great term, the itch to ditch. So watch someone else declutter and it's really gonna get you motivated to do the same thing. So um, the KonMari method, she has a few different series on Netflix. I know a lot of girls have amazing content here on YouTube. If you have a decluttering video, share that down below in the comment section because someone else may be motivated by it. And then, like I said, podcasts are amazing. So definitely just reach out to stuff like that. It's going to get you motivated because sometimes decluttering just does not sound fun. But once you get going, it really is. It becomes like a game to see how much you can get rid of. This next tip I actually found on my journey of becoming motivated. So I was doing a lot of research. I was already really good at decluttering, but I felt like I wasn't getting rid of as much as I wanted. And so while searching through like Netflix, I found The Minimalist and they have like a whole um, like documentary on it. Plus they have a podcast love 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 them so definitely check them out i feel like they're a great resource and they will definitely get you motivated to start getting rid of stuff they have amazing stories it's two guys so definitely look into them but the rule that really changed it for me was the 90 90 rule so if you haven't used something in the past 90 days and you're not going to use it in the next 90 days let it go that like blew my mind <laughs> and i was able to get rid of so many pieces in my closet so many different items around my house so it was one of those it just clicked for me i don't know which one of these tips is going to click for you if you've heard it or if you hear it throughout this video i'd love for you to type it down below i'm just curious which one just like you know just kind of clicks it kind of turns on that light bulb and you're like that's it that's a game changer that's how I'm going to change my life and the reason I really love that rule is it gives you some time it's not like okay if you haven't used it the last two weeks toss it because it's like but I might the last 90 days is a while and the next 90 days is another long while so if you haven't used it in those seasons chances are you're not going to use it so i feel like that's a really fair rule and it does buy you and allow you to have time on both sides just in case it's like a winter item and you're in summer <laughs> like yeah you may not need that sweater now in summer but you might need it once it starts snowing so i really like the 90 90 rule I don't remember where I learned this tip. I've heard it a while back and ever since I figured it out or heard this question, it has been a game changer and I think I always forget to share it with you guys. So I'm glad I'm creating this video and I'm remembering to say it. But when you're going through your house, ask yourself, would I buy this piece today if I saw it in a store? So this was huge when I was looking at like items in my closet, whether it was shoes or earrings or a top or jeans. If I walked into a store today and I saw this, would I spend money on it? And if the answer is no, then it's time to let it go. Like that is going to clear out so many pieces in your closet. I feel like we feel guilty sometimes and just hang on to pieces because we spent money on it or we haven't wore it yet or whatever the reasoning is. But if you wouldn't buy it today, that says everything. So it's time to let it go. I have one more question that I'm gonna share with you to help you declutter. And then I'm gonna have some questions for you on how to keep the clutter out. So stay tuned. But the next question to ask yourself when you're decluttering is, am I keeping this to make someone else happy? Did you get a gift and you're not using it or you don't love it or it's not your style or someone else convinced you to buy it because they thought it was like the perfect color on you but you don't wear color, whatever it is, if it's not for you, you need to release that. I feel like I get this question every time I put up a decluttering video and it's like, but what if someone got me a gift and I'm afraid they're gonna come in and not see it in my house. So 
I love to give, but every time I give something, I'm like, I am never going to look for this. If you don't like it and it's not your style, I'm not gonna just like walk into your home and be like, where's the sign I got you? Or you gonna wear the shoes? Or did you like that lipstick? Like a gift should never, ever, ever be given with strings attached. And you should never get mad at a friend if they chose not to keep something in their life that they weren't gonna use. So definitely just donate it, share it with a friend that will use it, let it serve its purpose, but with someone else. It just sitting in your house getting dust is not what your friend wants. To me, that's just like a waste of money. So you have to learn just to kind of let it go. Um, and sometimes you try it out and you didn't like it, but you tried it and it's open. So that's where you could just share it with a friend. You could even ask them like, hey, I know you loved this, but it didn't work for me. Do you want to use it? Because I know how much you love it. But definitely just be careful in relationships. If they're only your friend, if you keep their gift or hang their sign or whatever it is, <laughs> that's not a true friendship. So definitely just be super careful in those areas. I know with family, it can be tricky, but definitely never keep something that you don't love just for someone else. Now I'm gonna give you some questions to ask yourself when you're out shopping. Say you've decluttered, you love the way your home looks. Maybe you haven't even decluttered yet, but you don't wanna keep bringing more in if you don't love it. So the very first question to ask yourself is, can I afford it? And I don't mean can it go on a credit card. Can you afford it? If you have the cash for it and you can afford it, then you passed question number one, <laughs> but we'll go on to question number two. So question number two is, do I have a space for it? Or do I know where I'm gonna put it? Is there room for it? If you want a new sweater, do you have a hanger for it? <laughs> is there space in your closet? If it's a candle or a lamp or a decor piece, do you have a specific place it's going to go? If your house is probably full, you probably don't. So then your third question is, Am I willing to let something go so I can use this piece instead? So say it's a lamp and you love this lamp. It's everything that you want in your home, but you don't have a spot for it. Is there a lamp in your house you're willing to donate or sell or get rid of to replace it with? If so, it's okay. If you've got the money, you have a space for it. We're looking super good, but I have a few more questions I still wanna share with you. The next question to ask yourself is, what did I declutter the most? Or what are you getting rid of the most often? So I really had to work on this question with myself because I do declutter often. So I had to figure out what am I buying the most of and it's not staying around. For my job, it's a little harder because that's what I do. I buy things, I decorate for you, I show you tips and tricks, but I was even having these issues before I started YouTube. And what I noticed is I was going into Ross a lot and always buying home decor, but then I was always getting rid of home decor. So I learned that, that was my weak spot. So you have to be super careful. If you have the money and the time, go for it. If that's what you do for a hobby, if that's what you do for work, but if you're strapped and your budget's tight and you're just going in and putting decor on a credit card and then donating it later and it's just like this vicious cycle and your house is full and it stresses you out, you have more to clean, stop, <laughs> stop right now. So kind of look back, if you've already decluttered, you know, did you get rid of more clothes? Was it home decor? Maybe it was kitchen items? Kind of reassess in your head what you were getting rid of. Even after you declutter, maybe take a picture of that space so you can remember later, this is what it did to me. Like this is how much I had to get rid of. This is how much I wasted in money. Now for a living, that's what I do. And I love getting to donate the items when I'm done. My friends, my family, my local charities, all of that. But if it's not what you do for a living and you're just spending money over and over and over and then getting rid of them a little bit later, it's time to reassess and just be really careful when you go into those stores if you know that's where your like weakness is. I might 
step on someone's toes here. <laughs> so I'm gonna tread lightly, but just because you declutter one space, but you move it into another one does not mean you decluttered. So let's talk about this. Say you're working on your bedroom and you got it all cleaned out. It's so nice, it's so pretty, but now when we go into your guest bedroom, everything was just like crammed in there. That's not decluttering. That's just moving some of your items from one room to the other room. So just be super careful when you're decluttering. Make sure you get rid of it, no matter how you do it. If you wanna sell it and make money, if you wanna donate it to a charity or donation center, if you wanna give it to a friend, just have a plan and get it out of your house quick because if you go back through that box, you're gonna start telling yourself why you need those things, even though you don't need those things. Okay, so last tip, and then I will leave you guys alone and end it, but just remember there's no right or wrong way. So keep the items you wanna keep, Get rid of the ones you don't. Some houses are gonna be fuller of things. Some are gonna be more empty. Just to figure out your balance. I know for me, like clothing, the way I've tracked it is I don't buy more hangers. So once my hangers are full, I stop buying clothes. Now, if I go in and do um, a big declutter and I have 20 extra hangers, I know I can start buying clothes. Or if I'm at Ross and I find that perfect shirt, but, I know I have a shirt at home I'm not wearing, then I come home and I just do the one in, one out rule. So there's so many different ways to declutter. I just highly suggest do some research, turn on some YouTube videos, watch some Netflix series, and they really are gonna get you motivated. They're gonna give you lots of tips and they're gonna help you out on your journey. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Cause all you gotta smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make it.